again in these problems we have some more linear equations that involve just both plane x and y's and we'd like to be able to solve to see uh, if there are any solutions for, to the system. Um, again thinking back to looking at graphical analyses of these what we're doing is we're looking at two lines and we're interested in the ordered pair point of intersection. However, we want to try to get exact answers here, so we're going to do this algebraically using the process called substitution. In uh, problem number four, one of the things that we talked about when we're doing the substitution process is that we need to get one variable by itself in one equation. And when possible, it's nice to get a variable by itself that doesn't have a coefficient in front of it, because then uh, it's a little bit easier to work with. In, the, in problem number four, however, we really don't have that luxury. Uh, the, uh, the x has a 5, and the y has a 2, the x has a 2, the y has a 3. Each one of our variables has a number in front of it, so just choose one that you want to work with. Um, I'm going to just go ahead and solve for the x here in the bottom, of e bottom equation, because it's convenient. I'm going to start by dividing, or I want to get the x by itself. Uh, the plus 3y needs to move over to the other side, so I'm going to minus 3y from each side. This gives me 2x equals 18 minus 3y. And then I need to divide each side by 2. Here that's going to cancel out, and I'm going to be left with 18 minus 3y divided by 2. Or if you prefer, you can divide each of those pieces by 2, which would give us 9 minus 3 halves y. I'm going to use this version of it. Notice here I got the x by itself, and I got the x by itself in the second equation. So I'm going to need to plug this value in for x in the top equation. It's real important that you plug it into the different equation than what you started with. So in this case, what I'm going to have is 5 times, instead of x, I'm going to plug in 9 minus 3 halves y, then minus 2y equals 7. And now I need to solve this equation for y. First thing I'm going to have to do is get this y out of the parentheses. So I'm going to do that by the using the distributive property. This gives me 45 minus 15 halves y minus 2y equals 7. Now I have a pair of y's. They're on the same side of the equation, so I want to go ahead and put them together. Keep in mind what we have here is negative 15 halves minus 2. Think of that as 2 over 1. So then we'll have to do negative 15 halves minus 4 over 2 with a common denominator, and that'll give me negative 19 halves. So here I'm going to have 45 minus 19 halves y when I combine those equals 7. I can subtract 45 from each side. That gives me negative 19 halves y equals, and when I do 7 minus 45, I'm going to get negative 38. That looks right. Um, and then I'm going to times both sides by 2 to get rid of the fractions, which gives me negative 19y equals negative 76. And then I can divide by negative 19 on each side. And 76 divided by uh, negative 19, I think, comes out to actually be just plain old positive 4, which is cool. Uh, again, there's not a problem with having a fractional answer. It's just nice when it turns out a little bit cleaner sometimes. So for this one, I end up with y equals 4 as an answer. Um, again, my final answer should be written as an ordered pair. So I found the y-coordinate, still need to find the x-coordinate. So I'm going to take the value for y that I just found and plug it back into any equation. I'm just going to go ahead and use this 9 equals 9 minus 3 halves y that I was using before. Um, and when I do that, that'll be 4 over 1. We can reduce a little bit. This gives me 9 minus 6, which is 3. So I end up with x equals 3, y equals 4, and I found a system, a solution to the system of equations. Uh, again, if you want a final double check, you can put 3 in for x and 4 in for y into both of the equations over here on the left, and everything should come out to be a true statement. One last example here of some linear problems in number 5. Uh, do notice that here in the second equation, I do have an x that has no number in front of it. So I'm going to go ahead and solve for x in the second equation for this one again. Um, I'll go ahead and subtract 2y from each side first. That gives me x equals negative 2y plus 5. Now that the x is alone here, I can take this value and plug it in for x in the other equation up here. So when I do that, I'm going to have 3. Instead of x, I'm going to have negative 2y plus 5. Then plus 6y equals 10. 
Distribute to get rid of the parentheses. Gives me negative 6y plus 15 plus 6y equals 10. Go to combine the y's together. <coughs> Excuse me. Go to combine the y's together, and here I have negative 6y plus 6y, which is 0y. The y's are completely gone now for my equation. And what I'm left with is 15 equals 10, which is something that is not true. In this case, what it, this means is that I have no solution to my system of equations. Sometimes you'll see it written like this. Sometimes you'll see it as an O with a line through it. That in indicates the empty set or no solutions. Um, and this will periodically happen when you're doing trying to solve a system of equations like this. Um, from a graphical perspective, if you remember, we did uh, talk about Although most linear equations have one solution where the two lines will cross, occasionally we come up with two lines that never cross. So this over here, these two equations here, if we were to graph them, would end up, um, surprisingly enough, giving us two different parallel lines which would never cross, hence no intersection and hence no solution. But from a mathematical algebra perspective, this is what happens. You go to do a substitution, you put x, you, whatever your variable is, you plug into the other equation and all the variables end up dropping out. So instead of getting one equation with one variable, what we end up with is one equation with no variables. Um, it's possible to have no solution or the other possibility, if you recall, was that we ended up having exactly the same line, which would be an infinite number of solutions. And how you can tell the difference, both of them turn out this way, wherever the variables drop out. If you're left with something false, there's no solution. If you're left with something true, um, like 10 equals 10 or 15 equals 15 or 0 equals 0, that's the case for where you have an infinite number of solutions. So that's the other possibility that you can have. In terms of labeling our systems of equations, they do have special mathematical names that you may hear sometimes. If we have an inconsistent system, this is a um, system of equations with no solution. And again, this happens when your variables all drop out and you're left with something false. A dependent system, on the other hand, is a system of equations with an infinite number of solutions because you end up with the same line, so there's overlap. And this happens again when all the variables all drop out, but this time you're left with something that's true. So these are the special cases that you get, either an inconsistent system or a dependent system if the variables drop out. Otherwise, you should be able to find an xy solution pair like what we did up here in problem number four. And then that is the only solution that works for both of the equations that were presented in your system. In the next video, we're going to look at, instead of looking at just two linear equations, we're going to see what happens um, when we start working with quadratic systems of equations.